the concept for today is to talk about converged infrastructure. If you're not familiar with converged infrastructure is, hopefully you'll learn in the next couple of minutes. Um, on our panel, from, from some manufacturers and a customer, because I want to keep the manufacturers honest, uh, we have Dan Butzer from VCE. Dan is a distinguished engineer. He's been at VC for four plus years, pretty much from the beginning. And uh, I know for a fact he's an outstanding and valuable asset. Um, from Nutanix, uh, we have Justin Hurst. Uh, Justin is a solution architect for the Americas. He goes to where the customers are to kind of talk about the Nutanix value prop and what has to happen. And then from um, SimpliVity, we have Jesse St. Laurent. Um, Jesse is VP product strategy. He's been there for a while. He's their principal technology evangelist. So I think we're going to ask some questions about converged infrastructure. You're going to see a poll question in a couple minutes that we, uh, as a team, decided would be helpful to guide the conversation. So I appreciate your answering the poll. Um, lastly, we have Chris Campbell. Uh, Chris Campbell is the Global Director of Engineering at DeVry Education Group. Uh, I asked Chris to join. He's in the head customer. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Chris and his team evaluated convergent infrastructures you know, almost two years ago now, and they've been a VCEV bot customer. And they were always looking at new technologies and new converged infrastructure options. So I wanted Chris to be here to really kind of share some of his experience and also to kind of fact check these guys on some of the stuff that they're, they're going to bring up and talk about. Um, I think today has been great. We, we've been looking at the top of the layer, looking at the application stack, looking at the service infrastructure and the changes of how people are expecting IT services like they're getting consumer services. I think the rest of the day is really going to be focused on how we deliver services, how infrastructure is changing. And one of the ways that I see infrastructure changing is when corporations, enterprises, people decide that they do still want to retain that, that on-premise infrastructure, one of the ways that they can adapt and that they can move more rapidly to provide platform as a service on top of infrastructure as a service is to leverage converged infrastructure. So I think we're going to jump right in. Um, and, and we're going to start kind of at the beginning or the evolution of converged infrastructure as a product. So I'm going to start with Dan. And, and Dan, if you could kind of explain from a VCE perspective, why does VCE exist in the marketplace? What happened in 2009 that led you know, primarily EMC and Cisco to form the company? Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you see things working today? So in the 2009 timeframe, um, you know, VCE came together originally as a coalition around the V-Block, a V-Block coalition of companies that were looking to produce reference architectures that customers could go and take and produce a predictable and repeatable infrastructure. They could follow patterns, they could follow guidelines, and, and, and be able to take advantage of a lot of great design work that had been done uh, between Cisco, VMware, and EMC. But what our customers were telling us during that time frame is that they were still experiencing um, the need to put it all together themselves. It would arrive in a lot of boxes, and what they were really looking for was a complete out-of-the-box experience that brought everything together. So after listening to their feedback, VCE came together as a company to build a productized converged infrastructure, to build what we call a true converged infrastructure, where we have engineered, manufactured, we sustain, we build, we deploy, and we support the V-Block as a single product. That's our mission today. Okay. And, and did you see when you were coming to market as a reference architecture, how, how, what was the, the change that said no reference architecture product? Um, it was really based on customer feedback, and right around uh, October of 10 um, was the time period where we, we had V-Blocks in the marketplace. And what we noticed is that there was still some variation from V-Block to V-Block that really made it um, you know, the, the, the details matter. That's what it really boiled down to. The details matter and making sure that the consistency was absolutely there, the predictability was there. We built the V-Blocks with a very high quality in a factory environment under factory conditions rather than putting things together at the customer site. So what that did is it really sped the customer's time to value because they were able to pull the V-Block out of the cabinet. We were able to deploy it very, very quickly and it gave them um, really that time to speed their application deployment that they were looking for. Okay, good. So Justin, I know as a newer company, uh, can you kind of share the Nutanix story as, as a startup? Why? What, what was the market force that led your founders to say, hey, I got an idea, let's bring this to bear? Absolutely. And so we were obviously entering a very crowded marketplace, right? Lots of incumbents, uh, running platforms. And we took a look at what was happening at Google, at Amazon, at Facebook, uh, at Azure, uh, at Microsoft and looking at these web scale infrastructures. And what we didn't see was traditional storage. What we didn't see was traditional blade chassis. What we saw instead was a flat, homogenous workload, um, or infrastructure rather, built on commodity servers and tied together with software. And so we thought, let's take that idea 
and you have a, a software-defined platform, if you will, and apply that to virtualization, apply that to the consumer data center, the enterprise data center. And so the Nutanix idea was to take those technologies, those big data technologies, ideas like Hadoop, MapReduce, NoSQL, and use those to power a next generation infrastructure. The second piece was embracing the idea of virtualization as being the core of the data center. And so we made a bet, and it was a risky bet, to only run virtualized workloads. And to, by doing so, get rid of the need for legacy backwards compatibility, which cuts off some customer workloads, but also allows us to focus on being VM-centric okay. and really build a platform that runs virtual machines uh, and does our services per virtual machine. And that was really the, the idea in the market, and it's been getting some traction since then. Okay, good. Um, I guess, um, yeah, moving to Jesse. Yeah, again, relatively new marketplace with SimpliVity coming to bear. Um, a lot of traction, obviously. Can you share some of the background and, and history of how, how you made the decision to come to market? Sure. So we started out really trying to solve a couple key problems. And we looked at the overall market and, and similar decided that there was a better way to, to solve the infrastructure problem, right? There's, there's commodity components that you can build data centers out of. And, um, we took a bit of a different approach, though. When we looked at the industry, we looked at all the tools that were available, looked at the, uh, the file systems in the market, the distributed uh, technologies that were in the market, really decided we needed to go back to ground zero and build the stack from the bottom up. We didn't think that the tools that were available could be adapted really to deliver the services that we wanted. So the underlying foundation of what we wanted to build was really around two key areas. The first was... Uh, Hyperconvergence is what it gets talked about, but frankly, that's actually the least, uh, the, the least focus of our engineering team. Uh, the first is you know, inline deduplication compression optimization of all data at inception, globally aware. So that was a founding principle of everything we do. And uh, we felt that the mobility of, of virtual machines through the infrastructure really made this a critical aspect of the system. And the second thing that, that really drove the, the engineering team was what we call global federated management. So this is the ability to manage not just a single data center, but a global view of your infrastructure and abstract all of the policies that are protecting your environment away from the underlying infrastructure. And in the end of the day, uh, our customers, are, our infrastructures are being managed by the VMware administrator almost exclusively. So there is no more, uh, my apologies to any storage folks in the house, <laughs> there's no more, um, management of LUNs and shares, and a lot of the plumbing that historically was associated with infrastructure. So those were really the two, care, two key areas for us. Okay. Uh, Chris, yeah, maybe comment a little bit on, on their background and how they brought, came to market. But I think more critically, from a DeVry Education Group perspective, you had an IT organization. You had deployed infrastructure and data centers and storage and servers. And, and your team got together and decided that convergent infrastructure has some value. And that you saw, obviously, to make such a purchase decision, there, that there is a good rationale for it. Can you kind of comment on, on where they started and how you've transformed your data center leveraging these types of technologies? Sure. Uh, DeVry has traditionally been a large uh, Spark Unix shop. Um, we had a small footprint of, of virtualized uh, ESX servers. Uh, when we started looking at it, though, really, about two and a half years ago, um, I inherited an engineering team. We had a small problem. We, we'd give, I could give the same solution architecture to three very smart engineers, and I'd get six different configurations. It was remarkable. So when we started looking at converged infrastructure, what became apparent to us quickly is the same thing that VCE found early on, which was I, I really don't need the reference architecture. What I really need at the end of the day is a product, soup to nuts, delivered, ready to go. Um, so, so that's really what resonated with us at that time, was the fact that it was, it was an appliance, right? Um, with, with a lot of scalability and all the illities, right? Good availability, et cetera. So, so really that was the first thing we were looking for. The next thing that resonated with us was the um, compatibility matrix and the, and the, the way that, that the vendor managed the patching process. So it really took it completely off of the engineers. We were no longer tracking which patch needed what and which HBA card firmware update was going to break what thing, and we didn't have to do regression testing, et cetera. We offloaded that to, in this case, VCE. So um, again, that, that was uh, very, very powerful. The final thing that we did, and I think it's interesting because all three of, of these folks uh, 
have the same outlook, but there's really only one phone number to call. I don't call VMware and EMC and Cisco, right? I call one phone number, the support organization responds to me, they manage the escalations on the back end, I never see it, very, very seamless. So in the net, what's, what that's allowed us to do is we, aggress we, we were able to aggressively replatform uh, our infrastructure, we're now sitting at 94% Wintel, or Intel, I should say, and uh, on the vBlock, very heterogeneous, everything, it, just about every app uh, that's out there, it seems like sometimes. Uh, we, we really don't have, we don't have any issues. Um, and, and it's really allowed us to take the engineers and raise them up. They spend a lot of time solutioning for us. So they, they, they're spending their time solutioning deployment of services and deployment of application stacks in a more resilient fashion. We've seen sidebar improvements using converged infrastructure and things like DR just because of what it drives and because we find that we have more time. The tool belt is more full. Okay, well, I appreciate it. I think the other thing it positions and projects you're working on is cloud deployment, automation, uh, absolutely. service catalogs, things like that. And I know that's yep. next on the horizon. Um, go to the second question. Uh, Jesse, we'll start with you. From the perspective of scale and market presence, um, can you kind of talk about your use case and, and where you see your company fitting into the market from a scalability and uh, now and maybe future discussion? Yeah, absolutely. So when it comes to the Nutanix customer base, I was just looking at some numbers the other day. We're primarily focused at the, the mid-sized to large enterprise uh, and also a lot of ed education and government customers as well. Um, we didn't, when we originally launched the product, have a, a smaller offering for the branch office. We've added that in the last year. Uh, we've also added additional systems that allow us to go after 3D graphics, uh, to go after uh, high density data like big data applications, uh, things like Splunk or Hadoop. And so we move from that core virtualization workload of virtual servers, private cloud, virtual desktops, uh, into really any workload, any use case that can be virtualized today. Uh, now, because we are kind of a mix and match system, uh, we have a software fabric that ties together commodity hardware. We can bring to market new hardware to meet customer demands. Uh, as technologies evolve, for example, we're all going to be seeing uh, NVMe in the winter. You know, high-speed flash being pushed by Intel. It's really going to change performance at the server level. And we're, I think, well equipped to, to enable new applications to take advantage of that because of the platform nature of our software. Justin, same question. From a market perspective, use case, scale, how, how are you bringing things to bear? Yeah, I mean, I think the unifying theme across our customers is the multi-site nature of, of our deployments. One of the things that, that we uh, got completely wrong, this, one of the fascinating things about a startup is you, uh, you, you make a lot of wrong decisions, you just hope you make more right decisions than wrong decisions, right? So when we looked at the market, we had an expectation that some portion of our customers would be interested in DR based on all of our experience with traditional infrastructure. And it turns out that those expectations could not have been more wrong, right? We are, almost all of our customers, running multi-site environments. Um, and I think that, that's really been the unifying theme for us. So if we look, uh, f the apps we see are things like Oracle, Exchange, SQL Server, SharePoint, key business apps. Actually, we did a, a customer survey recently, and it came back. We have a, a huge number of SAP deployments, which uh, the amazing thing of once you release it into the wild, you don't really know what's running on your systems. Um, those are the types of applications that make up the majority of our customer base. They're running uh, almost all of them in DR as well. So there's policies being defined by the VM admin to protect the data not only locally but potentially remotely, potentially up into AWS as well to give them a, a pre complete protection of their environment. That's kind of the unifying theme across our customers. Uh, Dan, um, from the perspective of time to market, you know, you. you you have a little bit of a time lead advantage here, and you're starting a little earlier um, at, at Market Force. What, can you share some of your, your ideas on the scale of solutions that VC provides and how you kind of tackle the same problems that these guys are talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that's been really fascinating and wonderful watching over the last uh, four years here at VCE is that customers have um, both of the kinds of IT that Chad was talking about earlier today. Uh, they have what was characterized as old IT and new IT. And what we're able to do with VCE is we've developed a platform which is friendly towards the traditional IT applications that businesses absolutely have to run, have to be bulletproof to run their business to keep the lights on, while also providing an environment that's extremely agile and able to be used 
in the new IT world, if you will, to run the Pivotal <laughs> stack, uh, to run an, uh, any type of new application. Many vBlocks are used in the application development environment. In fact, it's one of our most popular use cases, as well as the exchange and the SAP and all of the, you know, bet your business, keep your lights on type of applications. So we've developed expertise in both of those approaches and allowing those approaches to be supported while also providing some of the kind of back end of IT things that people really have to do. They've got to have uh, multi-site capability. They have to have business continuity plans. They have to have uh, security and certification. They have to have auditability. And we've been able to engineer those things into the platform. And because we manufacture the product and do the physical and logical configuration under such strict guidelines and rules and audit, we're able to deliver a product with the documentation that helps people get through their certification, get through any regulatory issues that they need to, um, and addresses both the IT that they've built up over the years, allowing them to move that to a more agile platform while they build the IT for the future. Chris, you mentioned that you bought a VBlock and you deployed it with a data center, and you had a large success bringing all the VMs over and PDVing some other stuff and moving from Solaris to Red Hat and doing some of their work. Um, what other use cases for convergent infrastructure are you evaluating? Where else, can, where else do you see it fit, kind of in the line of what they're talking yeah. about? So it's interesting. We've actually looked at all three products uh, across our enterprise for various solutions. And, and, and the thing that's interesting to us is that each of the products that are being represented here today have great use cases, but they're not a great use case for every use case, right? And, and uh, uh, one of the things that we embarked upon, uh, you know, when we went down the V-Block road was a simplification of our environment. Now, everybody talks about it, but we're really going after reducing the number of platforms in our space. So, you know, we, that's a, a guiding tenant for us. So we're continuing to evaluate everything. But we have use cases for small uh, campus locations that currently, you know, a couple of servers, a little bit of storage for distribution, that's it. Maybe an Active Directory server, that's all. Um, and, and some of the products, VCE, for example, doesn't have anything that's cost effective for us in that space, right? Um, but uh, the, the new, new um, sorry, I always get your name wrong. The Nutanix, <laughs> new, how do you say that? Nutanix. Nutanix, sorry. Uh, the Nutanix product actually is pretty attractive in that, in that space. Then we have some other things going on in regional data centers. We have some locations internationally, um, uh, some medical schools that, that are very self-contained on islands, and we've been looking at the SimpliVity product specifically in that because of uh, especially some of the, the, DR, the global kind of footprint management that we feel like SimpliVity has gotten right. Very, very good. Uh, and, we, and we like the way the, the global management piece works as well as the distribution of the data and the, and the VMs, the ease of kind of globally moving that stuff around without buying a bunch of separate tools. So, you know, each of these things have great, have great opportunities, um, and, and, and every time we look for a use case, you know, it, the Converge comes up first. So, uh, which, which vendor is always dependent on what we're doing, and uh, we continue to evaluate them all. I think, you know, kind of going to the next area. So, we talked about value. We talked about positioning. I think, or we talked about uh, position. We talked about why you're here. Let's talk about value. So Chris has seen value, DeVry has seen value and bring it together. I know there's a lot of other convergent infrastructure customers here that have seen value, and I know there's a lot of people that are evaluating it. So we kind of look at the poll question, you know, uh, of the people that responded, most have already looked at or purchased or evaluated. Some people have not evaluated. That's an interesting, uh, having two, more than uh, three quarters of the responses, having looked at it or already done it, I think is an interesting validation of the product and the mix of uh, technologies you guys are bringing to board. When you look at your total value prop, if you have just a couple minutes, I think we do have a couple minutes each to kind of run through if you were going to do a speed date value prop for why VCE or why Nutanix or why SimpliVity, I guess this is your opportunity to kind of share with the audience, you know, what, what, is, what, what really differentiates you in the marketplace and, and, and why do you think you're positioned to succeed? We really focus on, on, on two major areas. The first one is speeding. Um, you getting to the point that you're ready to deploy applications. So this is the work that we do before we've even had our first conversation with a customer. This is the work that we do in terms of putting the reliability, the performance, the disaster recovery, all of the integration points into the product and doing it in a very, very rigorous way, while at the same time creating an environment that is ready for certification and ready for uh, review by the security teams and documenting that in an extremely rigorous way so that we now have a wonderful platform that is our base for innovation on top of that as people need to go ahead and add their applications to it. 
And we have that ready and we deliver that through a physical and logical configuration service for your V-Block that is built to order under the strictest of manufacturing processes in an ISO certified uh, manufacturing facility. So that's what is ready to happen before. That's all the pre-prep. But then what happens after you have the V-Block is really where I think the big value is. And the big value there is that we are constantly doing the integration and the innovation of new uh, features and capabilities that come to us from the massive R&D uh, spend of Cisco, VMware, and EMC, some of the biggest R&D spend on the planet. And we are continuously integrating that new uh, work into the V-Block through our release certification and uh, patch management and change management process. So as those functions become available, we integrate those in and provide you the guidance on how to upgrade any one of the different pieces that are part of a conversion infrastructure so that you can take advantage of those. And then, uh, you know, as you own your V-Block, um, as was already mentioned, um, and with, with many of the converged infrastructures, you're not sitting there trying to figure out, do I have a, you know, one of the traditional towers? Do I have a network problem or a storage problem or a compute problem? You're looking at it and you're able to say, VCE, there's something wrong. Um, the IO to that VM is slow, why? Fix it, make it better, make it go away. And it's our problem to go and figure that out. And if we have to deal with a firmware issue or something on the back end where we're back into third line engineering at one of the uh, core technologies, we do that. You don't have to see that. We want to make sure you don't have to see that sausage being made. You just get to enjoy a wonderful, wonderful meal. Okay, that makes sense. Um, Jesse? Absolutely. Um, so I think we've been hearing recurring themes all morning around agility, flexibility, scalability, uh, bringing that, that time to value down. And so if I, if I had to really sum up what Nutanix does, um, it's around those three areas. And so the first piece really is, is bringing simplicity to the data center. Uh, we've referred to ourselves as the, the iPhone of the data center sometimes. Uh, and you could look at that two different ways, right? And the first is that we're engineered to be simple, to be easy to use. Um, we have half of our entire engineering team focused on usability, interface, uh, interaction, because that's really critical for us. Um, the second piece is the iPhone is a platform. Right? It allows you to run these brilliant applications and to deliver value faster. So that's really what we think about from a simplicity perspective is how can we provide an easy to use platform that really takes the management headaches out of traditional infrastructure. The second piece is agility. We talk about things like lead time. Our average lead time from an order being received to shipping is three and a half days. Uh, the average time for an installation is 45 minutes. So we're talking about very, very rapidly iterating and getting people from choosing to go with our platform to running applications, uh, often in about a week. Okay. Uh, the third piece is flexibility. And for us, that means multi-hypervisor support, so supporting all three major hypervisors, VMware vSphere, KVM, Hyper-V. It also means being a platform. Like I said, we are completely API-driven. Uh, we have interaction with the cloud. We can do backup and archiving to the cloud. And so really becoming a control and data plane across the data center, uh, again, revolving around virtual machines. And that's the key piece that it all comes back to is everything we do is per virtual machine. If you want to enable disaster recovery, deduplication, compression, those choices can be made on a per application, per virtual machine basis, rather than managing LUNs, volumes, aggregates, things like that. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, so I think if we, if we step back, there's really three ways to simplify uh, any, any process in IT. Uh, the first approach that, that's in a lot of ways the simplest approach and a lot of startups take is you, you build a new UI to, to cover over complex infrastructure. Uh, there's a second approach which is you can take a 10-step process and try and turn it into a five-step process. But if those five steps are new, you now have to train your organization on five things that they've never done before, right? So forget your 10-step process, learn this new five-step process. Um, and the third approach is to take the 10-step process that, that the, the team already knows and understands and eliminate five of those steps. So you still end up with a five-step process, but it's a five-step process for a team that already knows those five steps. So if you look at uh, our, our technology from a management approach, we've taken the third, the third approach, which is we fully embedded our management into the native hypervisor management consoles. So there is a very small amount of our team dedicated towards interface design. The, the objective actually is, if you don't notice you're using our technology, we've been quite successful. Right? If what you notice is that you can do backups and restores and your data is moving around and, uh, and that just happens as part of your workflow on a day-to-day -day basis, that's success. 
Now, that's a terrifying decision to make as, a, as an emerging technology company and not the one most companies make. Usually you end up building an element manager and then you end up building an element manager to manage all of your individual uh, element managers. Um, that we decided disappear within the native management console. So that's true of, uh, of VMware. That's true for, uh, we run in Horizon or in our, uh, our KVM that's, uh, that you'll see shortly. And the same thing will be true in, in SCVMM as well. So as an administrative simplicity perspective, the goal is to completely disappear within, within those environments. So uh, I think that's a big part of the usability of the platform, the simplicity of the platform. The other thing is really designing data mobility in from day one. Right? So when we think about really the story for us, it comes back to the two points I made when we first started, which is, um, can you set up the environment to, uh, to be deduplicated, compressed, optimized? Basically, make your data efficient at the creation of that data. Right? So stop reprocessing it on the backup server, on the backup to disk device, on the Win optimization device. Right? If we went through the data center and thought about how many times our data gets reprocessed, um, it's actually a huge number of devices in the environment. And a lot of those devices actually reprocess themselves. Right? So they'll take a, accept a write, and then they'll go back around uh, try to deduplicate or compress it after the fact. Uh, we thought there was a need to do that once. So that's one aspect. And then the other is really taking the management aspect and baking it into the, to a global view. So not only this data center, but your environment. And, and simplifying it down to the level of how often do I protect this application? How long do I keep that backup for? Where do I send it? Where do I send it? It's just a data center. So you don't have to think about that. The VMware administrator can completely manage that infrastructure. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, one of the consistent trends that I see across the whole convergent infrastructure story and something that I talk to many customers about, and I know there's a lot of administrators in this room, there's a lot of architects in this room, is that it's interesting that in each of these products, that's in different ways, they're taking a lot of that decision-making process and that architecture control away. You know, it, if it's VCE, well, it's going to be VMware, Cisco, and EMC. Well, Cisco and EMC for sure. Um, but how it's put together, a lot of people are concerned is taking architectural control away because they would like to do it themselves. I think in your cases, we bring products in that are whole stack already, and there's, it isn't the same products, it's a different product set. The conversation I typically have with, with administrators or architects that are confronted by this dilemma is you know, the, value of the, or the value of the infrastructure that these teams are automating or bringing to market isn't business value. I think that the, the value of these types of products are we can accelerate business value. And I look at the teams and the administrators and the infrastructure architects and say, what else could you be doing that actually automates or provides better business value? If you're spending a lot of time in the data center or if you're spending a lot of time on code upgrades or you're spending a lot of time you know, just managing widgets, uh, what if you turned that and started using that time to do things like building and providing cloud portals or transforming, you know, spending more time in application or project design meetings so you have a voice in the infrastructure design instead of just getting handed an application stack to support. I, I, Chris, one question. I guess now that you're 18 months in, um, have you started to see the transformation of what your team is doing? And yeah. how, have they, how have they grappled with the fact that an infrastructure as a platform was purchased and you know, they were participated in the design, but it's been taken out of their hands a little bit? You know, it's, it's been a journey. Um, we're coming up on, on true convergence of some of the teams now. Um, it's affected our hiring uh, practices and the, the type of skill sets we're looking for. Uh, we're, we look for much more generalist uh, as far as administrating the system. I, I, I think um, the senior engineers are okay now, right? They've made that leap. They spend more time, to your point, delivering business value. Uh, I, I Converge has allowed us to do things very, very rapidly without, without, without much extra thought. Things like capacity upgrades and, you know, a adding plugging in a few blades or some disk or some, th just become very, very simple conversations. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, they don't have to worry about, uh, about where, do, you know, is there square footage in the data center? Do we have a place to put anything? Uh, they're dealing strictly at the VM level and up. They can focus in on more advanced application delivery, leveraging load balancers and et cetera. They can focus in on, on uh, highly resilient systems and, and failover capabilities and all, all, of, all of those things that provide true business value. We have seen and are experiencing approximately a 60% improvement in our speed to delivery just in general terms, right? Just 
I'm not talking about provisioning a VM in a few minutes, that, which is kind of trivia, but, but when it comes to soup to nuts, from solution design to construction of multiple environments and promotion paths, it's happening very, very quickly. I will say that I believe uh, most of the converged vendors are looking, are, are struggling a little bit. We're still struggling with the idea of a simple interface, abstracting the team. We still end up coming back to a storage expert once in a while. We still end up coming back to some of the deep dive technical expertise, good, bad, or indifferent, right? Okay. We're still looking for that true simplification of that environment. And I, I, don't, I don't think we're quite there yet. Like I, like I indicated, simplicity has got a very interesting uh, look on it that, that, that we're, we're very interested in. But I think some of the other things, you know, Envision OS on the B-Block is, is heading down that road, but I, I think it's got a ways to go. So, um, but on the whole, uh, Converge has driven a lot of, of, of things to, to really help us uh, accelerate. Thank you all for attending the panel, and thank you all for your attention.